So at the age of 13, my lovely dad took me to see the incredible drummer Buddy Rich. That got me going on the whole music thing. I managed to get a drum kit and pretty well I, I, I haven't had a year where I haven't been playing in some kind of band or ensemble ever since. I also, at the age of 18, went off to art school. First of all, did a degree at Reading, then the Slade, then um, ended up doing a post-grad and all the rest of it. About 15 years ago, went to my first gong bath. Actually met my partner, Lena, there, which was also quite significant, but had a really profound experience. Then, just before COVID, heard a gong, an incredible gong made of titanium, made by a a German master craftsman called Martin Blaser, and that gong was just head and shoulders above any other that myself or my partner Lena had heard. And literally the following day, I um, ordered a sheet of titanium and started this really amazing learning curve. Well, this is a gong about halfway through the actual making process. I start off with a 1.2 by 1.2 meter rectangular or square sheet. Then I, I mark a perfect circle and cut it out with an industrial jigsaw uh, in a bath of oil. The next process is to put the entire sheet, the disc, on a rotating turntable, spin it round and I grind with a very, very fine abrasive, very small abrasive disc, uh, these, these ridges, which gives it a really nice decorative feel. The next process is to hammer every single segment and uh, depending on the actual surface area, they will have received perhaps 100, 120, 150, 200, 250 hammer blows on every single one of these. So it adds up to many, many thousands of individual hammer blows. So you have to kind of unsettle it on a molecular level by just hammering and hammering and hammering. So the next challenge when you've got your giant Pringle is to try and hold that tension in place. And you do that by creating this rim. And again, this can take a few days, literally. Uh, hammering and then putting it on a flat sheet to see where the, the uh, bendy bits are. Going back more, more and more hammering, back on the flat sheet, more and more hammering. The wonderful thing about titanium is it's extremely hard, extremely resonant, but also you can actually obtain wonderful colors on the surface by engraving and using heat. For me, it's like a return to art school because I can actually paint with fire. The next process is to apply heat. Now, if you're working with copper or with bronze, when you, uh, you heat the metal, it softens. But the thing with titanium, it uh, does the, the opposite thing. When you heat the metal, it actually becomes harder and stiffer. And this is how come when they've been heat treated, they provide such incredible um, harmonic variation and these deeply affecting sub and ultrasonic vibrations and it's quite a laborious process um, sometimes I do it outdoors uh, over a, a wood fire uh, I think I have more control when I actually do it in the studio I use gas underneath the gong and then a massive uh, torch like a, a roofer's torch over the top and it's a very long process it can take three or four hours to fully coat fully cover an entire gong and then when that has cooled down I can then start to plan the sacred geometry, the engraving actually on the surface, which is all done by hand. I don't use any computers. It's all hand drawn first and then engraved with a little Dremel with tiny diamond impregnated tips in the Dremel. And uh, this can take anything up to 30 or 40 hours to achieve. When the, the engraving's fi finally finished, there's a second heat treatment process, which gives it an extra resonance of color, and, um, but also the resonance of sound. So when I wake up in the morning 
and it's a day which, where I'm free to actually go in the studio and work on a gong. I'm absolutely delighted. I, I really enjoy the actual process. I'm still learning. Every gong builds on the experience of the last gong. I think when the gongs are played sensitively and in the right environment, they produce frequencies above and below the very limited range of human hearing. And I think this is where the magic happens. I think gongs are very powerful instruments indeed. I really hope that I am able to carry on uh, making them and evolving the gongs for as long as I can physically lift a hammer. And so far, so good. <laughs>